Today we're gonna to do a different type of outdoor garden video. And you can see I'm using some big equipment over here. I'm using the skid loader to bring over a big limestone plinth. And on there I have some big crushed limestone rock too. And what we're gonna to do today is something more aesthetic. So I am out in the orchard I put in over at what I call the main farm, mom's farm. This is where mom lives. And this is all along the perennial bed that is on the downside of a limestone wall. And I've really kind of wanted a focal point. Now in the past, I've had this sundial here that I put together with some old found pieces from the farm. But I recently found an antique urn that I think would look really good here, but I would like to elevate it slightly so you can see it from on top of the wall kind of, which I'll show you here and down here in the orchard really well. So I'm gonna take you through all the steps of what I'm doing. It's really pretty simple, it just takes a uh, little bit of elbow grease but actually it's a really fun process and i've done this at different points at my house with my um bus that i have over by my pathway i did the same process so i want to show you here what i'm doing to hopefully answer any questions so you can do it too so with the house here behind me i want to walk you down to where i'm at so this is the entry to the orchard from what i call the east lawn and as we go down you pass through between two tall taylor juniper and you see the sundial right here. Now I also have a big, it's a big old iron column from an architectural salvage, like from some old building at one point. I have that in the middle kind of as a focal point, but then I have all the orchard trees around it, apples, pears, plums, apricots, peaches. And this is where I want something to have a little bit more height. So you can see I have a limestone plinth. I don't even have the urn here yet, but what will be nice is it's only about a two foot, one and a half foot wall, but it'll be elevated just enough with this plinth that you'll really be able to see it and notice it from away. I've mentioned before, I really like focal points in a garden. I really like using random pieces, architectural salvage or found pieces just to create those moments for me that kind of just excite me. And when you're walking through a garden, you come up on and are surprised and maybe kind of entranced by. So that's what really today is about is adding one of those elements down by one of my favorite perennial beds that I've put in. So we're gonna start by cutting sod out in the shape we want, the size of that plinth. And I'll kind of show you the plinth. It is heavy, that's why I'm using a skid loader to move it because you, you can't really do it by yourself. So obviously I would have to have help if I didn't have a skid loader because it's super heavy. I removed what was here, which I had a small little concrete piece used to just kind of create a level surface for that old little column and sundial. Really what I need to do was I first measured my big plinth. Now, this is a limestone live edge plinth, meaning it doesn't have a perfectly straight edge. The one side, so I got, one time I think I got six of these off Facebook Marketplace. That made them a lot more cost effective. But um, this side is cut a little bit more irregular, so I'm gonna point that towards the back. It really doesn't matter down here. Um, all of them though are live edge, but they have a nice clean cut both on top and bottom, so they do have a level surface. In measuring, I really only need to pretty much square this space off. So I'm gonna start, you could use a straight edge spade, I'm gonna use my half moon edger and I'm really just going to square it off to start and remove a little bit of sod. So what this is gonna do is give me a clean base. What we want to make sure is that this is gonna be level because if this isn't level, the urn sitting on top of it won't be level and it will both look weird and just be annoying kind of to work with when you're setting something on it and you'll notice it from a distance even more. If you don't start with a level spot to begin with, everything is gonna get worse as it goes up, think of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So what I'm gonna do is just square it off and remove that sod. So I wanna bring you down and show you. So I have my cutout. I already know it's centered with my step and my sight line that I wanted from where the sundial was. And I just made it the size slightly bigger than this big plinth here that I'm gonna set here. Now it's only about two inches down. I've taken a little bit of the soil off to slightly level it, but I'm gonna let the rock more level it. So this is not about laying a patio that's gonna be frost and freeze resistant. I'm not worried about that with this plinth. What I'm worried about is it just being not as level and wanting to sink slightly. So this is actually gonna now help and I'll show you what we're doing with the rock. So when we're working with something like a patio, say, or you're gonna have a professional patio installed or you wanna do it correctly, you would have multiple layers and you would have a crushed rock, a sand, whatever your top paver or final material is gonna be. In this case, I'm not wanting it to be a level surface to walk on or do any of that. This rock is purely for aesthetics and just to help it not sink into the soil near as much because this is a lot of weight. So what I'm gonna do is just add 
some crushed limestone, and this is more of, this is a larger three quarter inch. It's not washed, which I like the not washed. And I wanna show you what I mean by not washed. See how it has all that fine sediment? That's gonna help it pack in better into this area. Now, this is the same thing I've done at my house at quite a few. And the reason I don't go to the lengths of going, you know, a foot down or anything is because it's not needed for these that are just purely for aesthetics. On all the ones I've done at my house over the years, this has always worked great. And the thing is, over time, you know, give it 15, give it 20 years, anything can slightly move that has a lot of weight. So this is going to help it somewhat stay level, but it's also an easy thing that if I want to in the future, say 10, 15, 20 years in the future, Will I still be doing this then? We'll find out, I don't know. But um, it just helps me have an easier base to do that. So I'm adding that rock with all that fine sediment. And then what I can do is take a tamper. This is just an eight by eight tamper. And I am just going to tamp it so it starts crushing, not really crushing, but solidifying that rock together with that sediment that's in it. What this tamping really will do is give me that nice base. And if I need to, you know, sometimes what you're working with, whether it's limestone, whether it's the urn, it may not itself be level. So you may have to adjust the rock base for whatever you're using or your ground, the topography, maybe it's sloping and you want your rock to be more level, your ground will slope away so you can add more rock to one side if you need to. But what you can see is this is really making kind of a nice solid base. That's really what I want. And what I can do is while I'm tamping, I can then go in and add, more rock to bring it up to whatever level I want to. Now again, this is not about perfection, people. This is not, this is not perfection. A garden for me at my place is not perfect. It's what works for me. And it's what I can do on my own time and on my own terms. And that's what this is. This is not a botanical garden where people are gonna come and assess me. You can grade me if you want to, but please don't. Because that's not what it's about. We're in our home garden. We're in our place that's kind of our solace our comfort space and that's what we're doing here is just making things we like and making things beautiful and that's really all that matters so what i'm doing is tamping this in and then i'm going to finish up and i'm going to turn this skid loader on put my my soundproof earphones on bring it in and set it right in place see why it makes it easier with that I, I could not move this alone without. So what now that it's on here, and like I said, I gave myself a little bit of wiggle room on each side, because now if I want to, obviously when I put it on by myself, a little bit of this stone moves. So now what I'm gonna do is the ultimate test, and it's getting a level. And this is where we see what we need to actually do to it. Okay, that way it's actually quite level. I'm kind of shocked. Okay, honestly, we're working out really well here. <laughs> the only thing is maybe this way, going a little bit up in the front. But really, this is where, now that you have this rock base under it, you can see that all you need to do if you want to is just move it around a little bit. I can move it back, put a little bit of rock in front, and this is how I am allowing myself to level it in an easier way. Now, moving it like that, rocking it back and forth, that's more doable. Guys, that's pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is the fun part. This is the hard part. So we have a solid base. Again, this rock is not about weeds coming through or anything. Weeds could, grass can still maybe grow up to it. I'll probably have to trim around it. I don't mind that. That's all part of it. But now what we can do is go get the urn and set it up here. And I'm again gonna use the loader because work smarter, not harder, right? I know I'm saying this a lot. You have to be careful on what you can actually lift and what you can move on your own. I'm using a skid loader. That is the only reason this is possible for me to do on my own. This is heavy. This isn't near as heavy as this was. So this I'm kind of able to move on my own. Now, someone did slightly fix this at one point I found out after I purchased it, but that's probably why it was a good deal. So it's still gonna work great for out here and sit really nicely on top of here. We're gonna slightly center it, or as best as we can. And we're gonna look at our handiwork and hopefully be quite proud of ourselves, which I am. 
So this is where someone slightly fixed it to keep it together, but that's okay, it works. The, the urn itself sits a little off center of its base, but that's part of the quirkiness of it, right? So what I can do now is the fun part where we're gonna actually be able to plant this up. I've saved certain plants just to be able to do this. It's actually quite exciting to see how it's gonna come together. I'm gonna go put this away so we can have fun. So we're lucking a couple things in this urn. Someone at some point drilled some holes into the bottom. I, I don't think it would have been original. Usually urns have like a two part system where they have a reservoir and that keeps water off the base. But there's holes in it so it's gonna drain really well. Um, I do not recommend ever, I know some people, this is a somewhat big vessel, but honestly urns are never as big as they look because they taper in. Don't put rock in the bottom of something. No, don't jam plastic containers down to the bottom of a big container. If you wanna do anything, you could of course do some hygge culture. You could add in some nice chopped up leaves and sticks, things like that. You could also just put in some hardwood mulch, which is cheaper than soil, nice lightweight, well draining. You could do that about, you know, a third or halfway up depending on how big a vessel it is. For this size, I'm just using all purpose potting soil from Escoma and I'm gonna use it all. What I do like about their potting soil and what I really notice is it's lightweight, which is good, good drainage, but it also holds onto moisture enough. So it isn't so lightweight that it feels like air, <laughs> which I think some potting soils can be too lightweight. I think it has just enough in it. And what I'm going to do, I'll see how big the plants are I'm putting in here. I of course want to add in some biotone, a good amount of it here, because we're going to be putting in quite a few plants into this area. Now this is a full sun area, as you can see. It's pretty much unobstructed for probably close to eight hours a day during the really intense growing season. So that means I can do a lot of sun loving plants. And I saved, I have a few starts of elfinier that I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember if they're heart of the jungle or coffee cups, but they do really well in full sun and I'll show you. So we're starting with that elfinier, which it had been sitting in my plant room all winter. I would say it's like halfway dormant but still kind of pushing out growth. And this is a nice big plant and it does really well in full sun. And that's really what I needed here was something that was gonna do well in full sun. And it grew, I was kind of shocked, it grew vigorous roots over the winter. So I'm gonna knock off some of that soil from it so I can just plant it in here a little bit easier. But you can see all those beautiful roots it grew. So I'm gonna just try to make a center well here, put it right in. It's, it's instantly beautiful. This is why I love to save plants. So I have a Calancho. I don't remember what variety this is either, but what I like is it has that bronzy top, silvery bottom. I think it's gonna look really good next to this beautiful elephant ear. I, you know, I like to have fun with pots and kind of put different things together that maybe we wouldn't always think of putting together. Now, this was just from that elephant ear and it was just put in here last fall. I don't mind still using that potting soil. So if you have soil like that from just overwintering a plant, I will still use it, especially since I added so much nice biotone to the soil also. And then since we're having fun, I've been saving a couple starts of the burrow's tail. I have, every year I feel like I break off more and more starts from this. And what I'm trying to choose down here are plants that will be okay with a little bit of neglect. Burrow's tail loves that hot, dry sun in the summer. I have a few different starts of it. And I have, <laughs> I have the best luck with it when I don't touch it, when I don't care about it, when almost, I would say, I forget it. You know, there's a lot of plants that I think do better when we just give them a little less love. And that's one of them. Um, then I have some, I think they're, they're a Senecio. And you would think I would remember the name if it was string of banana. This is string of dolphins. That's what this is. So do you see how it has little, kind of looks like a dolphin if you look really close, those little fins that pop out. So this is string of dolphins, which no, it has a much more technical name, but let's be honest. I'm gonna be remembering string of dolphins, not the exact type of Senecio it is. But what I'm doing is choosing all things that in this full hot sun down here that will get really dry, even though we're having a beautiful week this week that will get really dry, could get some hot wind too, will still do well. Now, if I want a little bit of normal annual foliage, 
I got some Silver Star Hellier Chrism too left over. I'm just doing whatever I have left over from the summer, like for my plantings here. And this will give me more silver foliage. Now notice what I'm doing. I'm doing lots of silvers that really reflect off the silver of this Cloncho and the dark bronze color of this elephant ear. So it's gonna be a real play on textures, which if you follow me, you know I love texture. You know I love things that are gonna emit that texture. I don't always go for blooms, probably because I go for the unexpected. I have so many blooms in these beds behind here, you know, from the salvias to the peonies to the allium. They don't need the blooms here. I need texture and beauty, so that's what I'm doing. I wanna now show you that view really as you come down here. So see how that plant just elevates? I watered it, obviously. Elevates it enough, Kip is loving it, but it just now has a presence out here in really an area that can be pretty big and expansive. You have fields behind you, those clouds look almost fake today, and I promise you they're not. But really as this orchard grows into, these trees are gonna get larger. They're only kind of like midway in their growth. So it's gonna be this beautiful big sea of orchard back here. And then this is a juxtaposition to stop your eye and kind of enjoy something unique. And yes, I will probably keep the urn rustic for now. At some point in the future, I could paint it. I kind of like the chippiness and the shabbiness of it. Makes it look like maybe it's been here for, you know, decades, if not a century, and just been weathering, which I'm totally okay with. As we get up here, you can see the burrow's tail. You can see that silver star, Hellier Chrism, which is this, which will really flow out. The burrow's tail will come down. The string of bananas will come down. This calancho up here will really start growing outwards and get bushier. But what will really be the star is those elephant ear. They fill in and get really large. Last summer, they filled my whole container that I put them in. They got so big, so much foliage, and that's really what's gonna be the star of the show. Maybe you're not thinking, I wanna do this, but maybe now you're thinking, wait a minute, I could do something like this. I think, this is me, I travel, whether it's on vacations, whether it's through my phone to beautiful videos I see, and I get these small ideas and think, how could I incorporate something small like that? Because sometimes I think we get overwhelmed with the big things we wanna do and feel like we can never accomplish them. And this is a small way I'm accomplishing a part of those big dreams, is to do something like this that I would have maybe seen in a picture. Maybe it would have been done on a grander scale, maybe with a much, I don't know, more beautiful piece. But this is exactly now what fits my yard, my garden. So I hope you can think of the same maybe on a smaller scale, maybe on a larger scale. I'd love to know what some of you guys do to create spaces that you enjoy, that inspire you, that you've seen and want to mimic, because that's what it's all about. So let me know how your garden's growing. That's what I always want to know. Share this video around so other people can maybe be inspired too. And until next time, Kip and I are going to go work in the garden some more. What else would we do?